Hey everyone, this is Michael Huber and today we want to talk about insulation basics and we have an expert, Scott, with uh, St. Croix Insulation here to help us out and everyone seems to know that yes we do need insulation but it doesn't go much beyond that. So today I thought it would be great just to talk about um, the, the various types of insulation, um, where should they go and maybe how much do we need. So. Um, I see, Scott, you've got uh, some samples laid out here, so why don't we just kind of quickly kind of go through what are some of the options in terms of insulation. Okay, right here we have sheet foam, and a lot of times this goes on the outside of a foundation. It can go on the inside too, but generally it's on the outside of the foundation. Okay, so these are, are what's known as sort of rigid insulation. Rigid foam, correct. Because they're, they're solid. Correct. Okay. And this is spray foam. Uh, there's two different kinds of spray foam that we use in the residential field and that's a two pound foam or a closed cell foam and that's what this is and it's about an R6 per inch. Uh, this is an open cell foam, this is a renewable resource. Uh, this again is a, the closed cell, bigger version of the closed cell foam that we use on, on houses. Okay, so this is a spray foam that yep. when it dries it basically Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it's just sort of like a rigid. It's pretty much tack free, both of these, in about 14 seconds. Okay. So, and there's two products that come out, an isocyanate and a resin. They, they mix at the gun and that's when they create foam. Okay. Uh, and then we have the traditional fiberglass, which most people are aware of. We've got, these are the basics and, and I know there are all kinds of other, you know, recycled jean, uh, blown in insulation, Correct. that type of stuff. but. Um, just kind of focusing on these for, for a little bit, where, where then do these uh, various types of insulation work best? Let's, let's start with, or let's, maybe let's start with, um, you know, we've got floors, walls, and roof typically in a, in a project. So let's start kind of at the floor level, you know, the foundation walls under the slab. What type of product would you use there? Well, under the slab, you know, generally the, the concrete people do that kind of work, but they put this under the slab, these, these foams. Why? Because it's a little cheaper than spraying a closed cell foam down on there. Um, on the outside of the foundation, these are typical, uh, this is the typical foam that goes on after it's been waterproofed and before they backfill it. Um, a lot of people like this because they're saying that you get, you don't get the, the heat transfer, the cold transfer through the, the block wall then by doing it on the outside. Right. Some people like the uh, insulation on the inside but they're not going to finish their basement then they can use this foam and not stud up the walls in the basement then. Right, so at the floor level, at the slab level, basically this would go at the perimeter of the foundation to stop the cold from migrating Correct. into and, and up to the slab as well as it can go under the slab to kind of help either keep that the warmth of the, the space from migrating to the ground or the cold from wicking up and quite often it's used in conjunction with the radiant floor system so that it sort of bounces that radiant heat into the space versus warming the ground below. Right? Correct. Right and also um, there is some, some density to that uh, material so that obviously if you're laying concrete on top of this or backfilling against it you need something that isn't going to compact, right? Correct. Yeah. Well, let's move up then to, to walls. This is more of the traditional type of wall insulation that people are familiar with, the, the bad insulation and filling the, the stud wall sort of cavities, but uh, more and more people are going to this, this spray-in type foam, right? Correct. Uh, the benefits are that uh, they're air barriers, so uh, Unlike fiberglass, it stops any air infiltration from coming in and gets in every nick and, and cranny in a cavity. We all know these houses nowadays are a lot of, a lot of slopes and a lot of pitches and, and uh, you know, uh, barrel framings where the foams conform right to uh, whatever your structure is. Whereas right. fiberglass, you know, you might have to bend it. When you bend it, you take an R value away from it because you're compressing. Uh, and you got the air that can infiltrate through your, you have less likely with the foams to have the problems with mold, 
that you know we have seen over the years happen right because because of the air infiltrating and causing moisture to build up yeah so basically with the traditional fiberglass insulation you need a, a vapor retarder or barrier right. on the warm side of the space so that the moist air inside doesn't get a chance to migrate within the insulation and um, condense and and basically cause mold problems and and failure so what this does is acts as the insulation and the vapor barrier uh, so that we don't reach that dew point or that condensing point within the wall itself. Um, also, kind of what you were mentioning, I mean, there are so many wires and cables yeah. and things in, in the walls that this basically fills in and goes around all those voids. So it acts, as you mentioned earlier, the spray is sort of like if you're familiar with uh, epoxy glue, for example. You've got the two tubes and you push them together and they all come out and you have to take a toothpick and mix them up. And that's kind of yeah. what this, the spray gun Correct. is. It mixes the chemicals and then it, it goes in just like a liquid, but then within seconds it just starts to expand, right? Yep, correct. When you, when you talk about open cells, um, they're gonna, they, they tell us that this is 99% air here and only 1% material, which is hard to believe, but you know, that I guess is the fact of what this right. is. Well, an air is is really a good insulator. Yeah, so and that's that what makes sense. That's what's insulating your house, and it is. And between these two, this it, between these three, your open cell is the best uh, sound barrier to it. Let's uh, let's talk about the uh, let's move up and talk about the roof briefly as well. Um, on on the roof, again, typically you'd see bad insulation, um, kind of laid in between the truss uh, trusses. Uh, quite often you see blown insulation, uh, just kind of blown in there to, to build up um, insulation as well. So what, what have you been seeing in terms of the roofing? Well, still because fiberglass is cheaper and the way the economy is right now, you know, it's still probably 80% fiberglass in there. Uh, when we do get into the, the foaming uh, of attics, people really want to seal up their penetrations in the attic because that's where your biggest heat loss is. It's the, chimney effect, you know, the, the air is driving in through your rim joists and, and your basement walls and escaping, the heat is escaping through your roof. So you stop that and you keep the heat in. So uh, with the closed cell here, we've been spraying two inches on a ceiling, you know, vacuum it out, get it if it's empty or if it's a new house, put two inches of this on the ceiling or four inches of this on the ceiling and then blow fiberglass over the top of it. So that's, that's for the, the kind of traditional yep. um, pitched roof form and then for flat roofs um, typically we would go with more of a rigid type insulation Correct. Uh, and, and again that will kind of take this, the snow load and some of that and, and it actually can be a tapered insulation so that as water gets on it, we can kind of direct that out of the scupper or downspout or something as well, right? Correct. Well, let's, uh, I know we're kind of running out of time here, but let's just talk about quickly the, the difference in the R value or what is the, the better insulator um, kind of between these. And I don't know if it's best to talk about that per inch or... That, you know, that's a tough one. You know, everybody says, which one would you choose if, you, if it was your house? Um, you know they all they all have different benefits and it depends how much money you have and you know how many windows you have and if you're out in the middle of an open field or on a, on a hill with as much wind is coming in uh, you know basically like we've talked about with the fiberglass as air can move through it and if a wind load hits a house you know that R value goes down the R value in fiberglass I believe is 3.6 per inch you know if everything's perfect and all conditions are perfect uh, the R value with the open cell is 3.7 per uh, 3.7 per inch, but it's an air barrier, so air doesn't move through it. The R value with the closed cell is uh, six per inch, R six per inch, and it's also an air barrier and has a perm rating on it. Then at two inches, um, the difference between the foams is. Uh, Basically, when you spray a cavity, we all know lumber expands and contracts with the moisture in the air, and uh, lump, a house can shift, and if it does, there can be a hairline crack on the side. Could be. I'm not saying there is going. this is going to happen, but there could be. There's a hairline crack there. Obviously, you have a leak, and you have the possibility of uh, moisture, and you know, could 
lead to mold and those kind of things, you're back in the same boat again. Whereas the open cell will move three quarters of an inch with your structure. Right. You know, if it does happen. Yeah, and it shouldn't move. Shouldn't and, move that much. No, it shouldn't. But the, you know, those are the. That's what I try to tell people. I guess is there isn't one that's the best. You know, I mean, they're all they all got their good qualities about them. Right. So you need to analyze each specific situation. Correct. And pick the the, uh, the best choice. If people stick me to it, I guess I. I kind of believe in this factor that you know it moves with the structure. It's a better sound barrier. Um, okay. Better insulation. My, value my choice. Or... But all in all, obviously the the, the way the, the world is moving is foams are are gaining a lot more ground in the market. You know, over fiberglass. Okay. All right. Well, thanks a lot. I appreciate you kind of giving us the. Uh, the once over on uh, installation basics. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Uh, I know I learned a little bit as well and uh, thanks a lot. Yep, no problem. Thank you.